Smart lenses have such potential in the medical and technological spheres. A couple of these contact lenses are already on the market, but most innovations are yet to be available to the public. I'll summarise what's happened in the exciting world of smart contact lenses so far and let you in on the amazing potential of this technology. two main different types of smart lenses. Smart contact lenses that are usually disposable, they're standard contact lenses with additional technology that you can take in and out yourself by hand, just like normal contact lenses. The other type are surgically implanted, kind of like when people have cataract surgery and obviously they can't be removed or changed as easily as contact lenses. They have two different applications, they have two different uses, they, they can be really different. So the soft contact lenses, obviously they're easier to put in and out, they don't have to be administered by a surgeon or a doctor. They also allow for a better range of sensors because sensors, if you didn't know, usually have a shelf life. If the contact lenses can be replaced regularly, that means that the sensors don't need as much of a longevity. On the other side of that, the sensors in your contact lenses need to be really really cheap. Intraocular lenses on the other hand allow for long-term monitoring without the patient having to take any action. However the sensors need to have longevity ideally over 10 years. If you think about it how long do you want to go between eye surgeries? As long as possible surely. The medical applications of this technology are immense. If we take glucose for example, glucose monitoring is really important in people with diabetes. Babak Parvis was the first to put glucose sensors into a contact lens back in 2011. He was first working with Microsoft and then with Google and now he's an Amazon partner. He devised that you could sandwich a tiny antenna and a tiny chip in between two layers of soft contact lens material. A tiny hole inside the contact lens allows allows tears to flow through and be sensed by the glucose monitor in the chip. Similar to the existing CGMs used today, the contact lens will measure the glucose and pass the data, which then can be collected by a mobile phone. This simple device could even include LEDs, which light up when the diabetic person's out of their safe glucose range. Obviously this has really interesting implications for people with diabetes, especially if the information can be transferred in real time. This could allow alerts to be given to the user whenever they go out of their safe range. Why then are these better than the CGMs that are already in use today? So the CGMs that are already in use, the most common is like a circle, a plastic circle that you would attach to your body at any point. This still has a needle in it. And this can be a real issue for people with diabetes because they're more prone to infections. So additional holes in your body are perfect sites for infections to start. These contact lenses obviously do not perforate the skin at all. And when I spoke to a friend of mine about whether this would be beneficial, she said, yes, anything anything for one less needle. There's still a lot of work to do in this field and it's still not 100% clear whether glucose measurements in the eye are really relevant to the glucose measurements of the body. This is something that people have been debating over a long amount of time and they're still not sure whether it is an effective measurement of the blood glucose level. So much so that Google actually left this race in 2019. They said, our clinical work on the glucose sensing lens demonstrated that there was insufficient consistency in our measurements of the correlation between tear glucose and blood glucose concentrations to support the requirements of a medical device. However, many still continue to innovate in this sphere, so there's still hope, and I'm gonna circle back to this later. So because of the location of the contact lens, they're obviously uniquely suited to test for eye diseases and eye conditions and treat them. Glaucoma affects 67 million people worldwide and it's the leading cause of irreversible sight loss. It's caused by an increased intraocular pressure over a long period of time. The eye either produces too much fluid or the drainage of the eye isn't properly managed, which means that the pressure inside 
inside the eye is really high for a long period of time. This means essentially that the optic nerves are under a lot of pressure and can get damaged if it's left untreated for a long time. Current treatments for glaucoma rely on patient compliance. They have really bad side effects and their efficacy is really low. That's where the smart contact lenses come in. This smart contact lens by Bionode is one of the best examples of what smart contact lenses can do for eye health. The creator of Bionode LCC describes it best, saying, our device can electrically stimulate the muscles around Schlem's canal. The structure where fluid leaves the eye to decrease the impedance to flow and thus decrease the pressure. There's no surgery, it's not invasive, it's just a contact lens that you wear with a pair of glasses, it takes about five minutes to work and has no known side effects. It speaks for itself. That contact lens isn't on the market yet, but a small contact lens already on the market in this area is the Sensimed Triggerfish. It's a disposable contact lens which measures the intraocular pressure. It's designed to be used over a 24 hour period and it can really help with diagnosis of glaucoma. Another application is in drug delivery. Some eye diseases can be treated with microfluidic components that deliver drugs on command. They obviously can't be of high volume, but they've got so much more efficiency compared to eye drops. The eyes are really good at flushing out foreign bodies, which means that when you use eye drops, although they initially give a high dose of the drug, there is very little of the drug left after a few seconds. The drug eluting contact lenses continuously give a small dose, but because the rest of the drug is trapped inside the contact lens, released only when the lens breaks down, they last so much longer and the eye can absorb much more of the drug. Thera Optics, created by researchers at Harvard Medical School, releases drugs over time and can be used to treat a variety of different eye diseases. The lenses can be worn up to two weeks and have different options in terms of how much dosage is given over time. Sepsis is another issue that can be monitored using the eye. Early treatment of sepsis is imperative. It can be the difference between a course of antibiotics administered at home and multiple organ failure, ICU or even death. It's a major killer in hospitals. Lactate and tears is an early warning sign of sepsis and can be measured using smart contact lenses. Imagine a ward full of patients wearing these contact lenses. The medical professional in control of the ward could have maybe a tablet or a phone connected up to these contact lenses and they could see at one glance if anyone is suffering from sepsis in the whole ward and immediately administer antibiotic. This is a really cool innovation that could save millions of lives. Now we get on to the technological applications. Mojo Lens is a really cool company that's realising the technological potential in smart contact lenses. Their website says it best. Through the use of augmented reality, data can be presented on displays built into glasses or a headset. You can see turn by turn directions while walking, important steps for replacing an unfamiliar machine part or talking points for a presentation all without holding a device or looking down at a screen. By using a wearable display, AR helps you keep your concentration by providing information heads up and hands free. So basically it's a lightweight canvas for augmented reality. Last year's demos of the device, although not allowed to be put into the eye at that point, showed lenses with a monochromatic screen display, focusing light directly onto the retina, overlaid onto real life. The demo included night vision, where the users would be in complete darkness, and yet they would be able to see the edges of the objects around them lit up in green. This has really good applications for people who've got minor sight loss. The demo also included live health data for sports, such as your heart rate. They even demoed live subtitles against someone speaking a different language. How far are they into making this a reality? Actually, really close. Although those in January 2020 didn't get to try the lens in their eye, as of CES in January this year, the tech appears to be ready and they're hoping to have market approval by the end of this year. What I find interesting about the Mojo contact lenses is that they've got a fake iris which covers over the technology that's in a deeper layer of the contact lens. At the moment, they only work with an intermediary device which connects the contact lens to the smartphone, such as technology embedded into 
a hat, a pair of glasses or a necklace. But for me, I think that doesn't really matter. The technology is there and it's the fastest way that anyone's got there so far. So I, I'm really impressed. And NASA seems to agree. They believe that the technology in the augmented reality contact lens, because it's the only thing at the moment that will fit inside an astronaut's helmet, they think it would be really applicable to space travel in the future. If we think more generally about the spec of a smart contact lens, it must measure around 14 millimeters in diameter and it can only be between 100 and 200 micrometers thick. This is because it needs to allow the eyelid to slide across it seamlessly. That small curved disc must incorporate sensors as well as microelectronics to manage power consumption, control the sensors operations and transmit the sensors readings to a device such as a smartphone. The biggest challenges recognized by the contact lens sector are supplying power to the contact lens, incorporating all the tech in miniature and also ensuring that the sensors give reliable readings. If we start with the power, powering a teeny tiny object that floats on the eyeball surface is obviously going to be really difficult. Conventional batteries are inefficient for their size and obviously it needs to be really really small and also the chemicals that are involved in batteries are really dangerous for humans. The most convenient way to transmit wireless power is through near field inductive coupling. This is the same method used to charge electric toothbrushes when you put it into the base station and wireless charging mobile phones. In most of the prototypes where near field inductive coupling is used the transmitting coil is in a pair of glasses which for me obviously it's the only option that they've got at the moment so fair enough but if you're wearing contact lenses you don't also want to be wearing glasses so for me that's a bit clunky. I think other people also find it clunky and that's why they've gone into trying to find different methods of powering the smart contact lenses. At Ghent University in Belgium Herbert de Smet's lab has inserted miniature photovoltaic cells into the contact lenses so basically teeny tiny solar panels that are used to power the contact lens which is, I think is really cool. Other researchers are exploring how to use piezoelectrics aka turning movement into power. Another option is what Sweden's Malmö University has done and they've developed a smart lens which has a fuel cell which runs on tears. <laughs> They've used the chemicals in tears to power their smart contact lens. Like how goth is that? Smart contact lenses need highly accurate sensors that can be manufactured cheaply. And as I said, biosensors that rely on enzymatic reactions decay really quickly, they denature and they don't last very long. Glucose is a good example and there are many challenges with glucose. There is such a minute amount of glucose in basal tears. Typical tear glucose levels are in the order of 0.1 to 0.6 millimoles, while glucose levels in the blood range from about 4 to 6 millimoles. Therefore, some researchers argue that tears simply don't contain enough information to be useful for diabetes monitoring. Other scientists counter by citing studies that examine tears using mass spectrometry, which found that glucose is present in tears in low but consistent levels. Those fair scientists counter again and say, well, you can't fit a mass spectrometer into a contact lens, nor would you want to. And those sensors that you've got are nowhere near as accurate as a mass spectrometer. So these in animals have shown a lag of about 13 minutes between a spike in blood glucose levels and a spike or dip in tears glucose levels. If the delay like this is really consistent then that's fine and they can put that into the calibration of the glucose monitor. However, if it changes or if it's different every single time there's just no way to calibrate that. You really want a glucose tear measuring system that diabetics can rely on. In addition to that, if you're susceptible to really dangerous extreme glucose levels you'll want to know straight away you don't want to have to wait a specific 13 minutes or however long the delay is you'll want to know straight away to stop you from being in that dangerous range as soon as possible another issue is the chemical composition of the three different types of tears so there's basal tears and they're the ones that are just like in your eye all the time they just kind of lubricate the eye there's 
tears caused by eye irritation which come on when there's dust in the eye or maybe pollen and they come on clear the eye and there's the third one which are just emotional tears and these are three different chemical compositions and if the glucose levels are inconsistent with basal tears then it basically renders that contact lens as useless if it's hay fever season or you're watching an episode of Queer Eye. Another thing to consider is the social risk. People are really concerned these days with privacy and a device that's in your eye all the time that potentially has a camera embedded into it knows a lot of your personal information and can be connected to with just RFID may be quite insecure. Another risk is not being able to switch it off. A lot of people suffer these days with addiction to their their phone and if the device is literally on your eye 24 7 how do you unplug it might be really difficult something that worries me is the cost of this technology what if the health systems are too expensive for the NHS or too expensive for people who have private healthcare to be able to afford them? This is a technology that could be so useful and it would be such a shame if only a small percentage of society was able to use it. To conclude, the global smart lens market is expected to reach $2,860 million by 2025 while seeing a significant compound annual growth rate of 49.6%. These figures indicate that the research and development will continue to progress in the smart contact lens space. What's exciting to me is innovations in other areas can contribute to innovations in smart contact lenses such as flexible microscopic or semi-transparent electronics or advances in material science such as hydrogels. Hydrogels would be really cool to use for contact lenses because they're semi-permeable meaning that the eye would be fully oxygenated the whole time while it's being used. Although there are many challenges to overcome before these become mainstream, there are hundreds more advantages and applications that make the problem solving all worthwhile and I'm really excited about where this technology could take us. If you want to read more about small contact lenses, I've got an info page with all the references I used on my website, linked below. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments and subscribe if you want to learn more about biotech. I've got some really interesting topics coming up that you won't want to miss. Bye! Our device can electrically stimulate the muscles around Schlem... Schle <laughs> Schlem... Schlem's canal, okay. <clears throat> Whew.